Hi, this is uh, Jay Horowitz with a special edition of the Amazing Mental Health Mike podcast. My two old friends, Mookie Wilson and Tim Tuffle. But a tough question to get out. Both of you guys are going to be at the old timers game uh, August 27th. What goals have you set? A home run, stolen base, triple to left? <laughs> we'll go first. Book. No good? No. My goal is to survive. <laughs> I didn't want to survive the day. You, know. you take any extra BP or anything? No, no, I haven't picked up a ball or a bat. Um, other than a fungal walking around, but no, I've done anything special, but I will throw a little bit before that day. That's the only thing I really care about. I'm not worried about that and all that kind of stuff. How about you, Tuck? Double down the line? Yeah, we're talking one inning. <laughs> <laughs> I Hit your grand slam, maybe? I hope we don't pull anything. No uh, kidding. You know, uh, uh, I'll tell you what, Jay, I never hit with glasses on before, so yeah. this is going to be uh, a little bit different. Yeah, I, hope the, I hope Doc does a throw, he might be pitching. It, it, oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> I want to make sure I can see the ball for sure. Yeah. Let me look. 1986, I was five years out of college, you know. Okay. And when I came to the ballpark, I didn't know what to expect that year. I mean, you have Mike Tyson showing up. Yeah. You have fights. Yeah. You have uh, guys parachuting out of the air. <laughs> I mean, the whole team hated us. I mean, can I get you, we won 116 games. How did we win with all the stuff going on? I mean, it was, it was crazy. It was as crazy. Hotfoots. But with, with Roger and everything. I, I tell you, I, I think if you look back at this – that team, it's still one of the most amazing things to me. Yeah, we were, we were talented, but I think everyone have to admit that there were other teams collectively may have been more talented, talented than we were. They had more talented position by position, but I don't think that they came together as a team the way we did. We were so focused on, and and, and I have to thank, in my opinion, we have to thank St. Louis for that yeah. because we all had one goal: beating St. Louis. Yeah. That was. They you're beating St. Louis and that we were so focused. I think nothing could distract us. Don't what, what do you remember about that? I mean, it was nuts for me. You know, I mean, you you come from Minnesota, small town. <laughs> you come into the madness in '86. What was your first reaction? First reaction was, man, this locker room is intense. <laughs> 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 so coming from Minnesota, you know, uh, you know, I remember meeting you, Jay. I, I'll tell you, the, the first time you go, Tim, you got you got to learn how to do things, talk yeah. show with yeah. the Kinders Corner, yeah. and all that. That was all foreign to me. They really yeah. had two beat writers in Minnesota, and we came here, and there's 15 people at your locker after a game. It, it was a whole different atmosphere. Yeah. Cameras put in your face. You got NBC, CBS, and, you know, <laughs> everybody. ABC. Everybody had cameras <laughs> in your face, going, "Hey." You know, how did it feel to do this? How did it feel to yeah. do that? But, you know, I agree with Mookie. I, I think when I came over here, the yeah. focus was St. Louis because, yeah. you know, we, we didn't have wild cards back then. You had yeah. to beat the division rival, yes, and, and, and St. Louis was the team. And, and they had – You could help me. I'm going to bring up – you learned quickly, you know, tough. Game one, the series, 86. Mm. At second base, you – unfortunately, the ball went through your legs. Correct. We lose the game one nothing. Yeah. Two hours in front of the locker, wave after wave after, oh, wave, after wave after wave after wave. Waves. If it's a wave, the oh, waves kept coming. This interview is a whole lot easier, Jay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, that was, you know, you learned quickly. I mean, and, and not that it was great press, but the people loved yeah. you. I mean, but they, but they, they're there for the highs as well. Right. And that's what I remember. I, I remember, like, in St. Louis, I, I hit a home run off of uh, John Tudor. Mm. And the same guys are at yeah. your locker there for that. Right. And, and it's like, you know, you got to take the good with the bad. And some pe some guys just don't get that. Yeah. You know, when you come to New York, you're going to be either put on a pedestal or yeah. you, you're going to be the GOAT. Yeah. Either, one of the two, but it's hard to stay in the middle. You know, you're not. this town doesn't let you stay in the middle. You're either performing at your peak and, and, they, and they applaud you, or if you, like you said, you make a mistake or you make an error and it costs the game, it's a, it's a huge deal. Well, you never really had any problems with the media because you were always up front when, the, when it, your time here. Yeah, I, no, I've never had any problems with media, um, mainly because I understood what the jobs were. I, yeah. I really did. And um, like Tuff said, you had to learn to take, you know, the bad with the good. I had some bad days, some really bad days, right. but um, I never ran away from it. And um, I never made excuses, and I think that helped me a lot. You know, you guys, in a different way, had to adjust in 86. I'm, I'm probably, Mookie, probably going to lose the time frame, but in 86, what point in the year did you switch over to left? I mean, when you put Mitch at, short, at shortstop and Lenny was at center. Did they? Did we? What, I just forget what the what the time frame was. Okay. Um, well, you have to remember in in '86, um, I really joined the team late because I got hit in the eye. In the spring, I remember that. Yeah, yeah the I yellow got hit in the eye in '86. Right, I remember. Um, that positioning was already decided upon before this '86 season. 
before um, spring training. So you were you knew? I yeah. knew I was going to be platooning in left field, uh, in right field, left field, wherever they needed me to be. Right. I, I knew that was going to happen. Um, I had meetings with um, Frank Cashin and um, David Johnson about that. Um, neither one of them gave me any clarity. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but, but, but I knew, I knew that what was going to happen, and I, I think getting hit in the eye um, kind of put all that – aside because that was no longer a focus point. Now I had other things to worry about other than what position I was going to play. Yeah. Tough, remember you, you came over really for, for Tudor. I think the other lefties in the league because we were always short against you know yeah. lefty pitching. Yeah. And you platoon with Wally. Was it hard to platoon or did you know lefty you play, righty you don't play? I mean, was it? Yeah, you know what? Uh, it was different for me because up, up until that time, I was a, a regular every day, playing every day, play against righties. I could hit righties, hit lefties. So that sitting on the bench during like m maybe a four game yeah. stint is a little bit more difficult to come back off the bench and be sharp again. Um, so that was adjustment. You know, that was an adjustment here. I, I think it's. It's like what we saw a little bit this year with Lindor. You know, um, he's getting off to a great start this year. Yeah. But, but last year when he came over to a new league, there's an adjustment period. Yeah. And I think I ran into that in, in 86 in the beginning. I had to adjust to my role, but then I had to adjust to who I was facing. You know, lefties, and they pitch you differently. That strike zone may be a little different. Um, you know, we, we faced Atlanta, was, was, was tough with lefties. Yeah. Uh, we've, we've, we had uh, St. Louis was yeah. tough with lefties. Uh, L.A. had a couple lefties at Fernando. Out there. Yeah. So, you know, there was different lefties around the league that I had to get used to. The strike zone was a little bit bigger right. for those right. guys. So, yeah. And that was something to uh, adjust to. Quick, let's talk about Doc and Darrell for a second. The questions I get a lot, you know, from I'm sure you get them too, they had disappointed careers because they didn't get in the Hall of Fame. And I know, you know, like – like Daryl has been clean for 20 years. He's a minister traveling the country yeah. speaking against drugs. Dwight speaking at the high schools. In a way, isn't the stuff that they're doing now even more rewarding than getting into the Hall of Fame? I mean, I think both these guys are making a difference. Maybe things could be different, but what are you guys looking back on your legacy here? Uh, I, I look back at that because, um, as you know, I wrote a book a few years ago, and I mentioned um, these two guys in, in, in my book uh, because I thought that they were different. They were special. They weren't your normal 19, 20 year olds. Mm. They, were, they were superstars yeah. and they were thrown into uh, an environment that was not conducive to their growth as people. You know, yeah, they were outstanding talents. But I think, and I got criticized for saying this, and I think I, you actually, <laughs> I spoke to you about this one time, Jay. I got criticized for saying it, but I didn't think, think that we did enough for those guys. And I say we because I, I think at one point that we were so consumed by what they were doing on the field that we sort of, I won't say ignore, but we neglected. Them I, as I, I, I agree. I was part of it. Timmy, what do you think? I want to go back to me. Yeah, you know, with Daryl being such a star. Remember, yeah. I, when I came over here, it was it was the first time I saw those two yeah. guys. So I don't know their their whole history, but I I knew one thing: they were superstars. Yeah. And 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 for them to be you know rookie of the years and and, and do the things that they did already on the baseball field and be stars in New York, yeah. it, it's pretty amazing for those young kids. I mean, they were young yes. too. And that, that uh, stardom came very early. See, I felt those are the, probably the two biggest mistakes I made in my career with, with Daryl. Uh, Black Ted Williams, cover, Sports Illustrated, number one pick in the country. Doc, 300 strikeouts in yeah. Lynchburg, uh, you know, the Cape Corner. And I said yes to everything. You know, if you could be from the Dubuque paper in Utah, they need your tournament to come yeah. on throw a city <laughs> out. Of and that's the thing I look back on. Yeah. If, if I had been more restrictive in the beginning, yeah. would it have been different? I don't know. But I think about that today, you know, almost 40 years later, you know, yeah. that, I, that I should have been – I should have said no. I mean, you know, our team stuck then in 83. Yeah. And – I mean, Daryl was going to be the second coming of Jesus yeah. – well, I can't – Moses. Jesus yeah, 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 yeah. And – we they were, we we kind of took advantage of them in a way, yeah. you know. And I mean, well, I, I, you can't hide stardom. No, you, yeah, you, you can't. know, if they if yeah. they produce and and they are those guys, yeah. there, there's no hiding it. You know, yeah. people 
want access to the guy. They, they want to have a story. But I should have said no more. You know, I should have said no more. Yeah, and, but, they, and, but and the organization they, needs yeah. needs those guys. We, that, you know, and they need, yeah. they need stars. Yeah. And I, but Jay, to, to put you at ease, um, I actually had this conversation with Doc, and um, it's no it's no secret. And I was mentioned to him about this and how guilty I felt that I didn't notice anything. You know, you know, I I, I really didn't notice whether I was yeah. looking the other way or, or whatever. And to his words verbatim, he said, "There was nothing you could have done. Yeah, there's mm. nothing I could have done. I mean, that I felt good him saying that, but didn't make me feel. Mm. But I still felt that I didn't try. I remember you know April 1987. I think we were in the clubhouse. Frank Cashin walks in yeah. and announcing that Dwight's going to Smithers. Yeah. Mm. And you get the questions, you know, you could have suspect, but you know, I mean, anybody yeah. says they knew for sure. I mean, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I was yeah. around those guys. I didn't know for sure. You yeah. know, I mean, I mean, it, it just was a horrible day, you know. But, but looking back, they really come full circle a little bit. They're both doing good things yeah. and trying to make a difference yes. with people. I yeah. mean, don't you think so? I mean, yeah, I, I spoke with Straw um, a couple weeks ago. He's doing some really, really good yeah. things. And, um, I, you know, I've actually invited him to speak to my um, Bible group, you know, and he, you know, he jumped in the opportunity to do it. He's on the road over 200 days a year. Oh, yeah. Guy in the country. He is he's he, doing a two-time cancer fantastic. survivor, yeah. too. Yes. Two-time cancer survivor. Yeah. So July 9th, we we're going to retire Keith's number. Yeah. Uh, Gary and Keith, co-captains, captains, whatever. How do you describe your leadership call? I mean, they're different <laughs> leadership. They're different. <laughs> they're different. They're different. Yeah. 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 And, How, and you could throw Ray Knight in there, too. Yeah. 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 It, it, leadership yeah. as yeah. well. So, yeah, they are different. And, yeah. and, and Keith was the on-the-field leader. Yeah. Right. You know, he was the one who, who went to the mound, did the yeah. mound visits. He was the one moving the, uh, the defenses around. Yeah. Uh, he was the one who brought intensity yeah. to the game itself. Uh, Gary, Gary was uh, w was very exuberant. You know, he was he was more of the kid. You know, yes. he was running around and having fun. But K Keith was on the yeah. on the very serious side. Not that kid wasn't. No. But Keith was very yeah. serious about that two and a half hours on the field. Kim, I forget. Were you in the game in the 16th inning in Houston, or no? Was it Wally? I forget. In second. No, I, I was in the beginning of that. Yeah. Game. <laughs> no, I, but I just rem I just remember. The, the mound busy, two different versions where yeah, Keith oh, yeah. said to Jesse, yeah. if you throw another effort fast, uh, yeah. I'll, 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 I'll kill you. Yeah. Now Gary said, well, I said that, so it's a whole bit. Oh, each yeah. day, each it doesn't matter who said yeah, it. You know. You know, I, but I, 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 I can tell you who, where I think it came from. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, and, and that's it. I, I think that when we start talking about Keith and Gary, we talk about two really, really good leaders. Right. You know, but they led in different ways. Yeah. You know, um, you know, when you look at Keith, and I've told people this on many occasions, you know who the captain is on a club. You will know who that person, the players will let you know who that person is, mm. you know. And Keith was that guy. From day one when Keith came to this clubhouse, mm. um, he was the guy that people went to because he had this reputation of being the guy on the field, you know. Um, Gary had to work his way into this clubhouse a little bit. And you know it and I know it. Yeah, I do, I do. And I Gary, do. it wasn't an easy transition for Gary, but once that happened, then it became a lot easier for him to be um, vocal, you know, and, and to sp display his leadership in ways that Keith did automatically because the people automatically accepted Keith right away, you know, and which they didn't do for Gary, so that made them different. What do you think, Tough? Yeah, for sure. Uh, when, when I got here, you know, Keith was the was the leader of the infield. Oh, yeah. That's who I spent most of my yeah. time with because I was playing second base. He was first, and and uh, you know right away you, you knew who the reporters were going to go to. Yeah. You know they they wanted the story. Yeah. They got it out of Keith. Yeah. Um, Keith, you know, would walk into Davy's yep. office and start talking <laughs> to Davy about the lineup and who he wanted out yeah. there. And, and I'm like, you know, he he was very uh, gregarious. Yeah. I mean, yeah. he, he was a uh, you know he was the leader of, of the team right. at that point. Get, now Gary, I, yeah. he he led like Mookie said yeah. in a different way. Yeah. Uh, you know, you're talking about a Sunday yeah, game, so, oh day yeah. game after oh a yeah. night game. Oh yeah, he fought to be in that lineup. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. he, he didn't want to take a day off. No. I remember sitting from the locker, with ice bags over his knees. Yeah, you know, yeah. He, no, he was the yeah. total yeah. gamer for oh me. Yeah. Like, no like question behind about. the dish, uh, calling the games. Yeah. 
um, you know, working working as hard as he did, and then yeah. providing offense on top of it. The yeah. Catcher's That's by that. far the ho- hardest job on the field. Yeah. Both so of you guys in that way. Yeah. But both of you guys spent a lot of time with the major league team in spring training. I don't want to jinx anything off to a great start. What vibes did you pick up from being around Bucket and guys in the spring? Well, there's no doubt who you know Buck is leading the team. Yeah. You know, there's no mistake in that. Um, you know, there's no one going to challenge Buck on his <laughs> on his I- intelligence of no. baseball. He yeah. has, you know, if he asks you a question, he already has the answer. Yeah. So uh, from that standpoint, um, you know, walking in and, and then you see in Marte walk around. And, 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 you know, Lindor had a little hop in his step, you know, in spring training. And, and uh, I just see a team that's, that's, that's Escobar, the new addition yeah. at third base. You know, and then you have Alonzo at first base <laughs> who you're expecting big things from. So there, there's a good mix. There's, there, I think yeah. there's more athleticism yes. on this team mm-hmm. and more speed. And I think there's more danger to, yeah. this, to this team right yeah. now. What do you think, Luke? I, you know, I echo what Timmy said when I was there. And I was only there for about you know, five days. And I saw a cohesiveness that I didn't see before. Um, you know, I, I don't think that there was a light shining on one person say, you know, if you don't do it, we're not gonna fail. And the baseball team is not the basketball team. You gotta have you gotta have nine guys pulling in the same direction. And I mm-hmm. think that, um, and I've told people, I know there, there are many candidates that they have for the managing this team. And out of the candidates that they have, that I knew of. Um, but with the probably by far my choice because um, he's going to bring a little, um, for lack of a better term, a little, um, uh, I don't want to insult anyone, um, but he's going to be a little baseball the way it used to be. They, they were, right. He's going to see some things, and I think I've already seen some of the things. I mean, I've seen, what, four mm-hmm. bucks? I've only been here mm-hmm. <laughs> a couple of days. You just didn't see that before. You know, we, we, we're going to see a little baseball from a little bit of throwback, but yet uh, some of their respect for the game is there. And you guys, too. I mean, you're both ambassadors for the club. You interact with the fan, fans. You detected uptick in enthusiasm in little, you know, early in the year. Yeah, totally, totally. And, and you know what? They, the, the offense with Chavez uh, as a hitting coach, yeah. it, it, I've already seen a difference in, in, what in you, what's what going you on too? on the field. Well, yeah. You know, the other night we saw two doubles and they're both ground, hard ground balls yeah. down the line. I mean, uh-huh. we're, we're not, they're, they're, they're competing every yeah. at bat. Yeah. They're not giving away at bats. They're not just saying, yeah. well, you know, I'm going to swing big and hope. They're, they're actually putting good at bats together and, and they're moving the ball around and they're making things happen. They're, they're moving the line. Yeah, you know they're not looking for that that that, that lightning rod. What, what, what do you see, Mookie? I, I see the same thing in the last couple of games I've seen is that we are, we we are scratching. We are yeah. taking advantage of little opportunities to score one run. And I saw a great statistic on the board the other day about um, the winning percentage of the Mets when they score first. It was a great. I, I forget exact number, but I would look. I say, I say, so it does make a difference if you score that one run, yeah. that one run early in the game. But however you do it. And I think that's what I'm seeing now. These guys, they're looking to score runs by any means necessary. Yeah. And I like that. Yeah, I like that too. Yeah. What, what uh, you guys have so much in common. You both went to ACC schools, yeah. both managed in Brooklyn. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What was your experience man- you know, managing in Brooklyn? How many Nates and Hot Dogs did you guys have? Oh, man. <laughs> well, managing Brooklyn was one of the, the best experiences. I'm telling. Yes. Uh, yeah, that was in 2003, yeah. and, and uh, my first year managing, yeah. and uh, you get thrown into that environment. And back then, they they were selling out. Yeah. So it was exciting. Um, you know, it was it was a good place to start. Yeah. You know, and it was uh, it was a fun it was a fun summer. And how about you, Luke? I've enjoyed managing in Brooklyn. Um, I thought it was just one of the best um, managing gigs in all of baseball. I, you know, but I, I what, really what, enjoy. Why do you say that? Because of fans. I mean, we, you know, they're all Brooklyn Dodger fans. Number one, and um, I used to go and, and do some of the um, the PR stuff for them, and then people were really excited about the whole team. But uh, when you go and you start talking baseball, they all want to talk about Brooklyn Dodgers, and I didn't know a whole lot about the Brooklyn Dodgers. But uh, exciting place for like Timmy. It was an exciting place to manage because you're gonna have people in the stands. Because yeah. I was in Kingsport before that, and we had maybe. 25, 50 yeah. people on a good day. Yeah, it's tough. You know, it was tough. It yeah. was tough getting kids motivated. And here, that was the problem. Um, this actually was a situation where you had to get kids to adjust to the crowd. Mm-hmm. And that was more uh, of a challenge than anything else. Tim, Tim, both you guys 
have done a lot charity wise in your time here. I know Tim, you helped break a golf tour. How many years has your golf tour going oh, on? Man, it's been 30, 31 years. And it's for local yeah. free, for Greenwich, right? Yeah, yeah Fairfield uh, County Sports Commission. Yeah. It, uh, it's after school program for kids. And, and we have a mutual friend, Mark Yusko, who's under, under yep. the weather. You've done stuff to help him. Yeah, he's great. He's great. He leads the, you know, a lot of credit belongs give to him. Yeah. Uh, you know, I come alongside, but but we have it pretty much in place now. The sponsors come in and yeah. and do their thing. They have a great day, so they keep coming back, and it, it makes it easy on everybody. Yeah. Look, what I remember about you, and I, you know, we after the '86 series, there was a, I, I think what you call like a, a race ride. Yes. Ma Massachusetts campus yeah. in Amherst. Bart Giamatti uh, asked us to go up, and we we flew up together. And we yeah, just, we bounced up together on that plane. Small play, Marty Barrett. Yeah. Represented uh, the uh, yeah, the Red Sox yeah. and. Mm -hmm. Uh, but you could, I always felt you could have gone into politics. You never didn't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> never, you never, yeah. did you ever think about it at all? Or? Uh, no, um, I was actually, in all honesty, I was asked about going into politics once um, when I was living in Jersey. And I, I, this wasn't for me. Um, I, I just think that once you get into politics, you have to think one way. And mm. I'm a little... Uh, I'm I'm really independent when it comes to thought. I I like to think of what's best for the whole, you know, and and I think that's what's been missing in politics over the years and stuff, and that's not being too overcritical, but that's just why I decided not to mess with politics. But uh, that was a unique situation there, and that wasn't about um, left or right. That was about um, people, lives, and 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 right. uniting people together. That's what I was all about. Mm -hmm. well, I forgot to go back to 86 or 6, which I forgot to ask. Did you guys feel like Davey was the perfect manager for the team? I mean, I mean he had rules, but no rules. I mean, that was my perception. I mean, <laughs> that, that <laughs> is that's true. The, that's uh, about it. I'll tell you what, he, you, you walk into his yeah. office, at least he listened to you. Yes. Yeah. He may not agree with yeah. you, but he listened yeah. to you, and you get, you know, he gave you an open door policy. So yeah. I kind of like that, you know. Yeah. I, I think he was a player's manager, though, if, you, if you're going to look at it yeah. uh, from that standpoint. What would you think, Luke? I mean, but I, I thought, Davey, um, you say, was he the perfect manager? I don't, I think that he, at the time, yes. Um, and the reason for it, and I think Timmy probably explained it best, you know, David was his own man. Now you go in there and you can talk, but David was going to do what David wanted to do. Yeah. And I respected David. David and I didn't agree on a lot of things, right. you know, but I respected him for he assumed responsibility for whatever happened, and that was what I saw you can ask Remember, more. after the, the great plane trip from Houston, they wanted to build a $10,000, yeah. $10, yeah. and Dave ripped the check up. Yeah, yeah he did. Yeah. You know. but, and, uh, well, you know, um, I, actually, I actually told Dave I wouldn't pay him enough. <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? But that, that was just one of those things where um, – but David did find me one time, though. He did find he, me he one gotcha, time. He got you, huh? He did find uh, me one time. I, I, I came in late. Okay. Um, a truck turned over on the bridge. And I had to back up and go around Jersey, come back and come, they come into the ballpark, um, and which is fair. I, you know, people can give excuses all the time why you're late. Yeah. And, and I paid it, and uh, he gave the money to us. Uh, I forget what charity he gave it to, but it's fine. Another thing you guys have become, you're both good cooks. I know Mookie, you opened yeah. up a <laughs> catering business. Yeah. Why don't you tell people about that and, and our tough cooks, too? Why don't you tell uh, people about your business? Oh, man. I don't cook man. like Mookie. Now. Yeah. <laughs> 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 well, we're talking about catering and stuff and food. I've always been a cook. I, my mother was a cook for years in the school system, and I, I learned to cook from him. Uh, from her. We had a very large family, um, so whoever didn't go to church on Sunday was left back home to do the cooking. And so all of our brothers and sisters, we just became great cooks. And I took it up as a nice little hobby, created some of my own dishes, and improved some of her dishes. And um, now that I'm retired and from playing, I got more time to devote to it. Um, my brothers and I, we started a little business called Legacy Catering. And we go, we do some um, mobile catering is what we do. We do mobile catering. That means uh, ballparks, um, you know, amusement parks, or just parks in, in general. You don't have to have a, a venue, you know, to take advantage of our services. And um, I must admit, we are pretty good. We are pretty good. Uh, you, what's your I can't wait to taste it. <laughs> Tough, what's your specialty? Oh, man. Uh, I'm stealing all my recipes from my mom, so <laughs> i got to give her all the credit. <laughs> But, uh, you know, my wife makes a mean meatball. Yeah. I can tell you that. Yeah. Spaghetti and meatballs is her favorite. I do the turkey. I do the uh, Thanksgiving dinner. Oh, okay. So I do the turkey and all yeah. that, oh, all yeah. the fixings. So that's my big day. 
Oh, man. Yeah. You know, you. once again, I was a couple of years out of college. You guys made me feel like I was one of the boys, you know. Yeah. A lot of teams is not because we won, because we so much off our stuff yeah. going on. It was crazy times. You yeah. guys, I always felt I never wanted to consider myself a suit, you yeah. know. And I think <laughs> develop a trust with you guys. Yeah. We had a lot of, you know, a lot of stuff every day. We never a dull day yeah. in the '86 Mets locker room. You yeah. know, there was always something going on, Jack. Yeah, that's yeah. for sure. Uh, and you were in the middle of it. Well, <laughs> <some of it's, laughs> but that's bad, Daniel. Yeah, but uh, you guys, you know, it was a good memory. The ring was great. But just the, the, the bond. You know, we're, we'll always be, there'll always be a special group of guys, don't you yeah. think? No yeah, no question. Jay, I, let me, um, people, ball players in particular, don't just give their trust away. Mm. It's something that you, you, you earn. And um, I will tell you this, but I, I'm sure you know that, Tim, whether, you mm -hmm. know, you earn the trust of every player there because they knew you had a job to do, but you made sure that those guys weren't taken advantage of um, even at maybe maybe put you in a bad light with management sometimes. So be it. But you, yeah, but you stood up for the players if you thought it was the right thing well, to do. I tried to. And players respected that, even if they yeah. did some things when you didn't want to do because you asked them. Right. And that, that's what it is. Yeah. Right. When when Jay asked you to do something, yeah. well, who's going to turn Jay? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's no way. Yeah. No You've way. earned it, Jay. Well, guys, it's been a lot of fun. I appreciate yeah. your time and. Uh, you know, let's get another championship this year. That's so. what we're working on. Yeah. Sounds right. good, Jay. Thanks, guys. Great Appreciate job, Jay. All right. Thanks, Jay.